Good morning, YouTube. Well, well, I think Nikki and I both had a lot of fun yesterday at the bachelor party. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I didn't get drunk or anything, yes, but I'm like exhausted just from staying out late last night. Yeah. Not well, and it was out. like, I think we left the club. We were in the club at 1.30 we left, and then we had to go all the way back to Caitlin's house, which was maybe about... I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, we had to drive all the way back to our house, so we got home about 2.30. I stayed up till 4.30 editing my first cooking video, posted it. I meant to do that before we left yesterday, but I didn't get time, so there'll be a little link in an annotation. You can click on it. Homemade lemonade, great video. Please support the channel. I really appreciate it. But today, we're going to the USS Iowa. Hey, got puked on. And Nikki got puked on. Brain. Good job. <laughs> well, John and I figured, why not? like revert back to our going out tradition of the next day in and out burger. <laughs> we're treating ourselves to a burger and fries and we're gonna eat in the car on the way down to the battleship. And this is the first time my dad's gonna have an in and out burger. Never had one before. Are you excited about NPR? No. <sighs> John always listens to talk radio. Right now, John is like 60 years old. I felt 60 at that club last night. It reminded me of like Wild Hogs, like the movie, a bunch of guys getting their motorcycles and driving around trying to be cool. It was like a bunch of guys with like girlfriends and wife and some kids. We're all just standing there like drinking, looking cool, like, oh, we're cool. <laughs> I felt old. I felt like after we took our pole dancing class, I was like, huh, it's getting late. We're really, we're gonna go out? It's already 11 o'clock. <laughs> we're not going home after this? Yummy, yummy, in and out on my lap. Mmm, I bet you can't wait to try your first in and out burger. Well, we're here. This is a really big battleship. I didn't know the ship would be so big but I don't know that much about this type of stuff. Pretty cool though, I think today will be really interesting. I only managed to spill a little bit of food on my shirt. <laughs> Take an iris and the baby Bjorn. I'm so excited. Yeah. This is like such like a cool part of American history, just how like our freedom is defended and established and it's a serious piece of war equipment. Cool. Did you like your first In-N-Out burger? Yeah, it was all right. I think I would like it without the sauce. Like the spread is what makes it the best. We brought the baby Bjorn today because we're going to be going up and down a lot of stairs on this ship. We made it aboard. These are the famous 16-inch guns. They fired 16-inch shells. 20 miles, 500-pound shell, pretty impressive. It's uh, American firepower at its finest back in the day right here. Oh, there's a cap. Yeah, they always, I don't, they, I don't think this is the cap they put on when it was at sea, but they kept a cap on it to keep the barrels clean. Oh, I wanted to stick my head in there, but I can't. They put the cap on to keep the seawater off. These are gigantic bullets. That's more modern shell, I think, and that was like an older one. The term let the lead fly came from. Ooh. These fire, are all the different cracker. shells that they shoot. This one, Jim, you know, Judy's, remember? Judy? Sure. Over there? His dad would go up because he was he was on a cruiser. Mm -hmm. He was a pilot on the cruiser, they you know, on the seaplane. Yeah. Shoot the seaplane up, he'd go out and he'd scout and then he'd when they shot these kind at the Japanese fortifications, he'd clip off the walls. Whoa. It's cool to get the boys in their element, then they talk a lot more. <laughs> Whoa, this is a long one. Well, this is how they load the, like they load the shell in and they ram it up there. Oh, the that's all powder. Behind it, and they close it and they light those on fire. Is and that's it what too shoots bright it. for you? Yeah, we have to get her inside. Here. John told me to grab her hat, and I accidentally forgot it. Hopefully, she'll be okay though. Caitlin was saying that Bella went out all the time outside in the sun, and nothing ever happened. Three or four months, you're really supposed it's to like six. Keep her in the sun. It's supposed to be the first six months, but no, but she's it's like five actually the first, like three is the worst because there's some so soft. Yeah, but she's I mean, now. it's sunny out, but it's not like terrible. I think she'll be okay if we're just outside for like five minutes here and there. Right, Iris. It'll be okay. We just came inside and there's a bunch of pictures of the ship when it was active in wars and stuff. So here is the Korean War. Vietnam. Ooh. Pretty neat, huh? Yep. 
lot of history in here. Cool. <gasps> a dog! Battleship Iowa, where's Vicky? This dog Vicky was the ship's mascot and she traveled all around with the USS Iowa and it says that she was the first American dog uh, on Japanese land after the Japanese surrender and there's a story here about one time the dog went missing and they called for help from all of Long Beach in Los Angeles and the dog was returned back to the ship. They said she was absent without leave. I actually really like history too so I really enjoy coming on tours like this and it's just so great to see how excited John gets and how excited my dad is getting about being here. More pictures. Iris, we're on a battleship. What do you think about that? There's kind of a cool picture over here and I had no idea about this. Look at the water. This is what the water does when you fire a cannon. Did you did you already know that? It's a gigantic cannon. Well yeah. <laughs> it's a gun technically. Here is the executive officer's stateroom. Oh cool, there's actually so much to look at here. Now we're going into the state rooms. That's what it was called, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, for the higher ranking officers and commanders and captains and things like that. I think the captain's room is closer to the bridge and but if you had a room like this, I mean you were pretty high. Living up there. high. But I mean, you know, yeah, living high, but they worked hard to get to certain ranks and you yeah. have perks and stuff like that. Some bunk beds here. You can't be very tall on a ship. The ceiling's like right there. So I wonder if there are many like six foot seven men serving in the navy. We found the bathrooms. There's tile and everything. Whoa, that would be a really far drop. Why would why do they have a hole like that? It's the gunpowder canister hatch. Oh. Yeah. There's a sign <laughs> right there. And they John, you know, you're so knowledgeable. And they run all the gunpowder up those holes from the bottom of the storage and then they run them outside. That's here. crazy. Yeah. It's a long way down. Oh, this is it's bench time. Just right over here, the uh, Queen Mary's just over What's up, there. Guys? So we just yeah, got to come time. around that. All right, on to level two. Ooh, this is really a neat tour. Stairs. It is. If you are ever in the Long Beach, San Pedro, you know, Southern California, you're looking for something fun to do for an afternoon, I would recommend taking this tour just because you learn so much about America's history and you get to see just this really cool historical. I would say land, it's a ship, I don't know, I think it's a landmark now or something, destination, but it's really just really cool. Well, we've entered the captain's quarters and it looks pretty fancy in here. President Roosevelt actually rode on this ship. They have a sitting area over here. What do you I think? Called, uh, the USS Iowa, the battleship presidents, because I think a couple presidents actually rode on the ship in active war zones. Wow, well, it extends to in here as well. The captain's quarters are big. Yep. There's a bed here, then he's got yeah, his own sure private bathtub. Ooh, that's not a bad tub. That's a big bathtub. Oh. Bigger than the tub at our house. Yeah, I'm size of that. <laughs> like the, why I wanted to be captain of the ship was really just for the bathtub. <laughs> so he had an air conditioner? Wow. <laughs> the captain had his own cook as well. Iris is starting to get a little bit fussy. I will feed her in the car after the tour. I think she's getting hungry. Baby girl. Or we're not, or you're not walking enough. She likes to be constantly moving when she's in her baby B1. So well, now we're up on, uh, I think, the third deck here, the 5 inch 38 caliber Mark 12 guns. And they're dual purpose guns. Uh, their effective surface range is 10 miles, and they can do anti air fire from 7 miles away, which is pretty cra crazy. Uh, 15 rounds per minute. I tell you what, sitting in here and operating this gun would be so loud, it would probably go deaf because uh, it's just an enclosed space with huge guns. And Nikki's dad is telling me something interesting. Uh, there's two of these big gun turrets on either side 
and the Navy ran one, and the Marines ran the other one, because the Marines would always set out on a ship with the Navy, because they would like be a fighting force on the ship if it was ever taken. You need Marines to protect the boat, and then all the Navy crewmen would operate the boat. So it's pretty cool. So it's a it's an amazing piece of history. So much history here. And, I love American history. I don't know if you guys probably know that, but this is just so cool. You know, it's so true when they say that you want what you can't have. Every time I see stairs roped off, I'm like, oh man, I wish I could go up those stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to true. go up there so badly. Wow, look at that. So here's the shells that uh, were fired out of these guns, but you have 13 crewmen on top, 14 on the top, 13 on the bottom working these one gun, so that would be 13 plus 14 is 27 people. That's a lot of people operating one weapon. And Nikki's dad is a retired army colonel, so I think he really likes being here. It reminds him a lot of, you know, the service and sacrifices he made for the country, and he just really enjoys American history. He has, his whole family kind of has a huge military background. There was people in World War One, World War Two, the Vietnam, the Korean War, and uh, you know, a lot of his cousins, uncles, all served, and uh, some of them actually paid the ultimate price defending our freedom. But uh, I don't know, it's just, I think it was a special for us to be able to just come here and hang out with him, and we're having a great time. My favorite part, going up the stairs to the I different do. levels. I love, kiss too. I love but this is also just a fantastic tour for kids. You, they learn a lot about American history, and they get to kind of run around this awesome battleship and just, uh, you know, enjoy being here. So if you have kids, I would definitely recommend bringing them to a, you know, a battleship tour. There's a couple different battleships stationed all over the country. Uh, my brother and I went out on the USS Mobile, which was in Alabama a while back, and that was a great time too. I think Iris has uh, learned a lot. I think she's hello. ready to write a paper. Peekaboo! Peekaboo! I see you! Peekaboo! Oh, your eye is goopy. You're getting a little tired, girl. And hungry, I think. Oh, getting higher, Dad. Yep, all the way up the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> John was around the corner over there, and I'm like, John, I think you can sit in this chair over here. John's like, uh, okay. And I said, don't you want to sit in it? Won't it make you feel like a big man? I'm not quite sure what they did from this chair. It was the chief of staff's chair. I'm sure he was in charge of a lot of people who are doing something, but this would be, I think you would see here with binoculars or something mm -hmm. like this, but this would be like a pretty, uh, good nice view. job sitting in this chair. Yeah. Dolphin! What? For real? <gasps> chair, take the camera. Well, we saw the dolphin once. Maybe that was the power of the chair. It's like what that chair was meant for. The dolphin call. Flying. Here they are! Yay! We got them on camera! I like dolphins. Neat. Cool. Another plus of hanging out on the USS Iowa, we saw dolphins. Uh, dolphins are awesome. Chemical and collision alarm from the 04 level bridge. It works, it works. Good job. This was the intelligence gathering room. Pretty cool. Here's the wheelhouse. I've been looking for that. I wanted to take this out for a little cruise. It's pretty cool here. Like the boat. Yep. And the captain would sit right here. But probably the captain's chair. Pretty sweet. Um, you'd have to be kind of a tall guy. To... <laughs> be getting a view of those guns going off Don't right let the here. Dolphins are still there. They would know. be pretty crazy. You know, you always hear about stories where people like are divers and they make friends with a dolphin. The dolphin comes to see them every day. I want to be that person so bad. You have to get some scuba diving equipment. Yeah, or a surfer. Like I don't know. Yeah. You just go swimming and like. I've fed seals, dolphin. which was cool. I want to be friends with dolphins. Yeah, the dolphins weren't interested in my squid, but the seals were. Iris, listen to my voice. Iris, <laughs> listen to my voice. Ah. Wind. Aaron, do you feel like that a, breeze? She's really a baby Whoa. model now. Ah. <laughs> Hi, you like you? that? You're so cute. There's some serious firepower right there. Those guns are just a little bit more modern. Got the radar going. Look at that, just like disappeared. Just took off, made a run for it. I bet he's really enjoying himself. And I'm seeing firefighting 
hoses and water valves all over the place. Uh, you know, fighting fire on these ships was like a number one priority if a fire ever broke out because it could destroy the whole ship, almost any ship. You know, a fire is one of the biggest threats to it surviving. And these, I think, are flares. So if like a heat-seeking missile or something like that is coming in or they need to signal somebody, they'll they'll shoot these flares off. All right, missile defense. Yeah, that's what that is. Those flares right there. They shoot them off and then the missiles hit all the metal that gets shot out of there. One of the things you can do too, uh, it's recommended on all boat ladders that you can go down facing the ladder so you can hold on and be like, ah! Okay. But can you just get down here making me nervous? Why you don't I need to explain it. I don't get that people to talk to. Oh, okay. I do need to <laughs> I just get so nervous with these ladders and, you know, like an edge like this. My dad is sharing war stories with some volunteers that he found and is talking to. I think these are missile launchers. Ooh. Big ass missiles out of there. I think it's another modern change because the battleship originally was like the giant guns was like the big show of force. And Why isn't this fast? Over time, because I'm just holding her. Over time, you know, they added more modern weapons like the Sea Whiz, anti-air, and anti-missile defenses, and missile launchers, and things like that. I'm such a nervous Nancy. I'm like, John, be careful. You could trip. That's interesting. More missile launchers. Cool. Missile launcher or something. Well, I just had to go feed Iris in the car, and I thought to myself, when I go back on the ship, I bet they'll be in the store, the gift shop, yeah. and sure enough, here it's you pretty are. Pretty cool. That, you know, yeah, the they US have a lot of they stuff. Have a, the gift shop's actually in part of the ship, so I'm gonna buy the book, The Last Stand of the Can Sailors, oh. which was the extraordinary World War II story of the U.S. Navy when they were stuck in the water for like three or four days. Yeah, there was a volunteer up there who was a part of this. Well, they got this for you. Oh, thank Make you. Visit fridge. destination. Even though our fridge doesn't have, like, isn't magnetic anymore. <laughs> yeah, stainless steel magnets. Figure it out, science. Aww. <gasps> Look how cute <laughs> you are. <laughs> She smiles, of course. Oh my god, that's adorable. I, I, was, I was looking at candy, and then I'm like reading it to see what it is, and then she just spit up on candy. I'm like, well, guess I have to buy this candy then. <laughs> All right, so we're heading out of here. We ended up buying four photos that we took when we were coming in. Two for John and I, and two for my dad. So we have these, I'll show them to you in the car. I'll open it up. Dad bought some stuff in the gift shop too. What did you get, Dad? Oh, spotted some, some more stuff you like. I got some CDs. Yeah. With uh, music from the 1940s that I like, that, that I put in the, the car. Cool. And uh, that I grew up with, with the music from the 1940s when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. then I bought a couple of postcards. Cool. You and your postcards. I would think you would want one of those. What is it? Medallions. Looks like John is ready to go. Iris was due for another nap. I could see she was getting a little fussier and fussier and she finally fell asleep in the baby Bjorn. Oh man, but we're gonna have to wake her up when we put her in her car seat. Well, that was a really cool tour. I really enjoyed myself here aboard the USS Iowa. And like I said, we all really like history and I think it's fun to come out and showcase things in our vlogs that like, you don't get to see everywhere, you know, to showcase landmarks and tourist attractions, things like that. So these are the pictures that we got. We got one each smiling and one each action shot like this. We are at the Queen Mary in Long Beach. Can we cross? Yes, okay. Crossing the crosswalk, someone's letting us go. <laughs> so here it is, Queen Mary. We're gonna be taking a tour aboard the ship and we made reservations for dinner. They have a restaurant in here inside the Queen Mary, so we'll be getting an early dinner. They were kind of all booked up. It was either at 5.30 p.m. or 8 p.m. for dinner. 5.30 is early for me, but 8 p.m. seemed too late to have dinner in Long Beach with the baby and we wouldn't get home till late, probably like 10 or 11. Little Iris is exhausted sleeping away. We're finally seeing the Queen Mary like you wanted. Yep. Yep. There's a submarine too. Oh, so cool. Submarine. Cool. 
So we've been to the Queen Mary before for some of the events that they put on, like they do Haunted Harbor. Uh, two years ago, I think it was, we came here with the neighbors and fun. they had all those haunted mazes. Yeah, it was really fun. And like, yeah. I feel like we've been here another time, but have we not? Am I confused? We did a winter thing here, yeah. We did a what? A winter thing. Winter? Yeah, I thought so. I have a feeling like we've been here twice as well, but I can't remember what we were doing. I We've never taken a tour on the ship, so this will be a first for us to actually go walking around and seeing stuff. We just went in the mazes on Halloween before. Oh, that's gonna bother me so much. When, when else were we here at the Queen Mary for something? So apparently we might not be able to get dinner here. We just um, found out that it has a dress code and we didn't know when we made reservations. Well, we might have to transfer to another restaurant. Sure. So we have to go to the restaurant and ask if they'll let us eat there tonight. <laughs> well, either way, at least we still get to walk around the Queen Mary and my dad can see what he wants to see. Cool. The Queen Mary's supposed to be haunted. I know that. I've seen it on TV. So I actually feel kind of bad because um, the neighbors wanted to meet my dad and we said that we might be going to the Queen Mary one day and we would um, possibly invite them to come to the Queen Mary with us. She, and she said that sounded fun, but we came here kind of last minute. Like we didn't know that we were gonna come here right now. So I didn't invite the neighbors. They, you know, they wouldn't have been able to get here in time. Oh, they have a bunch of model ships and stuff in here. Cool beans. It's a big one. What? Why? Oh, it's like a dollhouse, but a ship. Look at that big coal. Fun. That's how they power the engines that burn coal for you. That's still not places to I wonder where the pool is. I was looking at some of the hotel rooms in the model ship. I'd like to stay the night here one night. This looks kind of swanky. Ooh, look at the lounges. Ooh. Well, we lost my dad. <laughs> he just like wanders off and looks at stuff. He really enjoys these things. Have fun going to the bathroom, John. Me and Iris will wait out here. Oh, sorry, honey. I just realized I might have sounded a little snotty vlogging, but it was totally unintentional. Like, right after the lady said that there's a dress code at the restaurant and we might not be able to get in, I was like, oh, apparently we might not be able to eat here tonight. We might have to go to another restaurant. I said it right in front of her. I'm like, oh, she might have thought that it was kind of like addressed to her. No, just saying what's going on. Now I have to find my dad and John. They disappeared from me. I had to use the restroom and they kept on going. So I'm outside on the deck. See if I can find them anywhere. There's some guns on the ship here. I wonder why that is, why they have to have guns if it's a, a like passenger boat not a battleship. Maybe they have to fight off pirates or something. I'm just having my own little fun journey walking around. I'm vibing. I'm feeling some vibes. Just walking down this long hall here. They have some like olden day music playing in the background. I feel like I'm in a, another time walking a, along the deck of a big ship. I'm so lost. I have no idea where everyone is. Still lost walking around by myself. But ooh, look, there's a carnival cruise ship and they have a cool slide on the deck. That looks so fun. I want to go on a cruise. John and I should start going on some fun family vacations. Well, I found everyone. They were just looking around. I was vlogging that I was lost for a while. Am I even filming neat. you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. My dad said that's all he really us. wanted to do, though, was just walk around a little oh, bit. Yeah. There's a water slide on there. I filmed that already, too. Oh. <laughs> Um, so now is the, there's light boats, life, yeah, life boats above us. That's where we're going. <laughs> so now's the moment of truth. We're going to see if we can eat at this restaurant. We have to go ask permission. Awesome <laughs> for you. <laughs> okay, so we get to have dinner. Yay. I went up and I asked and they said that there is no dress, there isn't a dress code. They said that was years ago and now they don't require suit and tie anymore. So 
fantastic. We're going to eat at the restaurant that's supposed to be a little nicer than the other one. And we have to wait like 20 minutes though because they're not open yet. Some people look like they're doing their wedding run through over there. So this restaurant is really beautiful. We're having dinner at Sir Winston's on the Queen Mary. <laughs> You're a sucker for Iris. Look at these chairs. They're soft. Yeah, looks like a, a nice restaurant. And we can look out the window here and see the ocean a little bit. Nikki is walking Irish. She's getting a little fussy, so we're trying to put her to sleep. But I have French onion soup. She's got lobster bisque. This is a mushroom souffle, shrimp cocktail, Shirley Temple over there for crazy Nikki, and uh, lobster bisque. So we're just waiting for Nikki to get back, and we'll dig into the appetizers, and then we'll order our entrees here after that. But this food looks really good. Well, I'm finally back, and I can try these amazing hors d'oeuvres, and they're so good. Mm, my chicken is here. It has a wild honey glaze. You didn't add pepper to your food, I'm concerned. It has plenty of seasonings on it. <laughs> you want to show off yours, Dad? I got a flower. <laughs> Dad got duck breast. Am I supposed to eat this? You can. It's, it's an edible flower. It's edible. It's working. It's working. Just like we have at our house. We're done with dinner. We're just waiting for the bill. Iris woke up and fussing a little bit, so Nikki took her out to the lobby. And I'm gonna pack up all our stuff here, and we're gonna hit the road and head home and see what the dogs are up to. Dang, Long Beach looks good at night. It's actually really a pretty shoreline. All right, here. When we're done eating, we've got Iris and Nikki's dad, and we're headed to the car. What a wonderful day. Uh, we really enjoyed the USS Iowa. Had a wonderful meal at the Sir Winston which is like a Winston Churchill themed restaurant on the Queen Mary. It's pretty high end and upscale, but it was absolutely delicious. It's supposed to be so, or Winston Churchill. Yeah. Really? You missed out on that? Yeah. I they sell that. cigars. Oh, I think we missed our turn. Go back here, get lost. Da, 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 da. They should do a scary maze through here. We had so much fun yesterday visiting the USS Iowa and the Queen Mary. Dinner was wonderful. I think Nikki's dad really enjoyed the day. He got to, uh, he really, really wanted to see the Queen Mary, but he also was really excited to see the battleship. Um, it brought back a lot of memories and a lot of the volunteers there are actually war vets. So he got to, you know, tell old war stories with him and meet a bunch of cool old people. And I highly recommend that you guys visit the USS Iowa if you're ever in Southern California. Great family destination, great historical site. And also the Queen Mary, you know, it's also a really cool place to go to. It's a just a neat old giant ship, and it has a lot of history and a, a lot of cool restaurants there. You can stay there, a hotel. But uh, I'm going to wrap up this vlog. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, favorite this video, and we'll see you next time with more Nikki and John vlogs.